Every good horror franchise needs a prequel, right? Or actually, does it need a prequel? A Quiet Place released with a lot of success in 2018, helmed by actor-director John Krasinski, and after a sequel, and then another sequel that is bound to release in, uh, I think, next year or the year after, we are getting a film from the director of Pig, Mikhail Saronsky, who is tasked to show us the outbreak of this alien invasion in New York City. Lachlan, on a story level, on a setup to universe level on an entertainment level did a quiet place day one succeed my god those are three different levels uh on a story level i think that it achieves a really good narrative without being too similar to the other ones it's it's characters definitely are way more different they're way more engaging oh you know what no i think that they are engaging in a way where they don't really have anything to fight for so they're fighting mm. just for survival where in the other ones, John Krasinski, uh, Emily Blunt, they're obviously fighting for their kids, and that's a reason to fight, where you're trying to find these guys' motives. You're trying to figure out why they want to keep pushing on, and when it's just for a, quotation, slice of pizza, there's probably a lot more going on than just being a slice of pizza, and I think that that simplicity mm -hmm. of just wanting that last slice has a lot more meaning to Sammy and and eventually she tells Eric why it's important to her um, from uh, who her father was and what he was to her and, and, and what he used to do at that that pizza shop and, and jazz club. I think that it is a really interesting narrative and, and I think that from an entertainment level, it, it's the only series where I will accept jump scares as a reasonable way of scaring <laughs> people because yeah. the jump scares make sense. Uh, and I think that it's not just for cheap thrills. It actually does make logical sense that these characters or these creatures will come out of nowhere. In a terms of timeline for making the other two movies, it doesn't impact that narrative at all. And I think that that's super important, especially when we've come off the acolyte that has made certain things in other Star Wars movies redundant uh like there has been no sith for over a thousand years well shocker here's a fucking sith right in front of my eyes the film doesn't overlap any sort of narrative beats they kind of continue on and i think yeah. that that's super important when it comes to a prequel so i think it succeeds two thumbs up and I think it has a cat, so it has that going for it. Other than that, I think I was a bit let down for what I wanted to get out of this. I wanted to get a moment where they figure out uh, that it's sound-based. Uh, we kind of don't get that because it's cut away and then they already have figured it out by the time we get back. Uh, we do get a bigger setting, a bigger budget, about three or three and a half times uh, that of the original movie. So obviously we get to see it uh, all unfold on a larger scale. There's lots of explosions. There's a ton of extras in there and it just feels a bit more threatening as we get to see like the, the first day of this uh, invasion and everyone uh, not being able to adapt to it and the few people who remain... Uh, to see like the the city who never sleeps uh be silenced forcefully you know is is a compelling i think pitch on an actual movie level i was impressed by it technically uh especially like in the sound design once again that's where uh, all of these quiet place movies really shine um but then especially by the performances of joseph quinn and laputa nyongo by ways of expressing emotions without saying much or like the in between or the whispers and Stuff like that. I think that's really strong. It's great direction on that front. I just didn't really connect with them on a level where I was really rooting for their survival as much as I was with maybe other horror franchises or even within this franchise for the family. We built to that, obviously, but there was something missing for me there where I thought I wanted something different out of this uh, movie. So maybe uh, if I watch it again and I know what I'm getting, then it won't be as taken aback by certain choices, narrative choices. But I arrived at a three out of five for this one, but I, I give it like a mild recommendation. If you're a fan of the franchise, then surely it's worth seeing. But uh, yeah, Lachlan, I feel like you you uh, a bit more positive on it though yeah i gave it a three and a half out of five i think it was a lot of fun let us know what you thought of it and we'll see you soon bye